Hey gang, welcome to our 2024 Studio Rack update. So I'm getting ready to start a new EP for a client. Got it up on the console and since we've rearranged everything in our Studio Rebuild series, I haven't gone through all the pieces here. I've gotten some new stuff, things have been moved around. We have a lot of new people checking out the channel, so I thought this would be a good opportunity um, at the beginning of the year to kind of show you, this is, uh, Jan we're at the end of January. Uh, 2024 to show you what we have as far as gear, computers, I.O., all that stuff, so you know what I'm using. And then maybe we'll do this every year, and then throughout the year, if I get some new gear, I'll certainly report it to you as always. So, uh, just to let you know, this is all being done with my GoPro. I'm just using the audio uh, on, the mic on the camera itself, the microphone, so sorry if the audio isn't great and the lighting isn't perfect, but it'll be good enough for what we're doing. So we're going to start up here at the top and we'll work our way down and over and um, I'll let you know what I'm doing with these things, what I usually use the gear on, what elements. So we start up here at the top, we have two uh, distressors. I've had these since the uh, since the beginning. Um, I mean, these are, you know, multi-purpose, can be used on just about anything. I use these a lot on electric guitars. Um, starting to use them on snare drums a lot. You can use them on anything. You can almost have two or three more four more and it would be great but these are uh these i use all the time i use them on every mix on something they bounce around depending on uh what the song calls for what i need but yeah i love the distressors those things are awesome super super versatile um considered the swiss army knife of compressors and i wouldn't wouldn't disagree uh down here we have the audio gain lab empress this is a, a tube equalizer stereo this is across my master bus i've done a review uh, on this on the channel. I think most of the gear you're going to see today There are videos on the channel for it. You can always go search the archive. This is um, kind of a modern style It's a Pultec style with a mid-band uh, frequencies here um, and some different um, shelving and uh, peaking uh, boosts and cuts Everything is all stepped So it's great for recall, but what's really great about this as well is we have an additional uh, tube circuit that you can take the tube circuit in and out if you just want to run it or you can take the EQ in and out if you just want to hit the tubes or you can have them both in at the same time which I usually do I love this thing for master bus EQ it is super versatile typically I'm starting with a pretty uh, mild setting usually 30 Hertz I'm boosting a DB or two 16 K boosting a DB or two and usually a little bit at 1 K in the mid band um, one and a half K I'm boosting a couple of DB and then I'll tweak it from there, but that's pretty standard. Love that thing uh, made by uh, Gain Lab Audio. Awesome, awesome EQ. Uh, if we move down, this is the first of two um, Apex 204 Oral Exciters. I use these primarily on Tom Toms. I have two of them, one here and then one over here and each one of them is stereo. So you can run, you know, Rack Tom, Rack Tom, Floor Tom, Floor Tom, that kind of thing. Um, I use those all the time. They're also great on bass, but I usually just use them for toms for the most part. Again, they don't make these anymore, but you can find them on Reverb for a few hundred bucks. I have two of them. I highly recommend them. Uh, beneath that, we have our first of uh, three 500 series chassis. Right here, we have the 542 uh, tape emulators by Rupert Neve. Again, on the master bus. I love that. That comes in the, in the signal chain right after the EQ. It goes to the tape machine. Love these things. I'm um, almost always on the red circuit occasionally occasionally i'm on the blue circuit but nine out of ten times we are on the red circuit next to that we have the spl big again there's a review on the channel for this this thing is great i use it kind of sparingly um i love the the base i always have the base circuit on and those are my standard settings they don't change very much so just a light widening Really like this thing a lot. Really versatile. Sounds great. Doesn't do any kind of weird phasing thing. So I love that. That comes right after this in the chain. Uh, next to that, we have a DBX 510. This is a subharmonic generator. I'll use this on kick drum, bass guitar every so often. Not all the time, but when I need it, it's a great little handy tool and it's very affordable. Uh, next to that, we have a pair of Trident ADB EQs. Um, for the money, these things are great and they sound really good. <clears throat> I don't, I use these on different things. I don't use them on every single mix. I don't use them as much as I used to. 
but pianos, these sound really good. Snare drums, they sound really good. A nice little versatile EQ that's a little bit of a different flavor from the SSL that's on the console. So when you want something a little different, that's a nice little utility EQ to have. And I think they're 400 bucks each, which are, are, are worth it. I mean, they're just great to have when you need them. Next to that, I got four of the SSL E-Series Dynamics. These are the Dynamics that would have been in the E-Series console. My SSL Origin doesn't have Dynamics on every channel. I'm um, just EQ, so I wanted to have a couple of pair of these VCAs. And I use these a lot uh, for the gates, for kick and snare. Um, I use these on uh, bass guitar. Sounds really good for the compressor portion of it. Uh, sometimes on snare as well. Just a nice, great little versatile um, compressor, even on electric guitars, they sound really great. Uh, let's move down a level. Let me get my chair here. Hold on. Apologize here for the shaky camera. Next down here is the API 5500 stereo EQ. This is strapped across my drum bus. I love it. Sounds great. Uh, pretty much it lives there. You know, usually doing a boost around 60, usually around 5k, maybe 12k. This thing is an amazing piece of gear. Love it, love the sound of that thing. Love it on drums. Sounds great on guitars as well, but like I said, for the most part, it lives on my on my, uh, on my, my drum bus. Uh, down here, we have the next 500 series chassis, West Audio, this is the Titan. The one up here is the West Audio Super Carrier, by the way, this is an 11 slot uh, chassis. This is a 10 slot chassis. So from left to right, we got the West Audio Dione, which is a, kind of a supercharged uh, SSL bus compressor, VCA. What's great about the West Audio stuff in general, number one, they're all digitally controlled with the, with plugins, which is awesome, so you don't have to come over to the rack and turn them, although you can. Um, and the other thing is they have the total harmonic distortion circuit on all their, uh, all their gear, which I really love. Sounds great. And again, everything is done with a plugin. Really, really versatile. Um, SSL VCA style with a little bit more juice in the tank. Next to that, we have the West Audio Rhea. This is a very mute compressor. Sounds wonderful on piano, wonderful on acoustic guitars. Again, all digitally controlled with a plug-in. Uh, we have two Audioscape V3As in the 500 here. These are the LA3A uh, clones or copies. These things sound great on electric guitars. Use these all the time actually sound good as a pair on a drum bus too. I did a video on that, but I don't use them on that, but these things are great. So this is an awesome LA-3A uh, you know, replica from Audioscape. Uh, next tonight we have the AMS uh, Neve Reverb, digital reverb. <clears throat> I use this quite a bit. Usually I just use this for the most part on drums. Um, sometimes I'll use this, sometimes I'll use a plug-in in the box, but this is routed direct directly to the stereo one pair of the stereo effects in the console. So this is a really nice reverb, really great. If we move down a level, we have the Audioscape AS78, which is their copy of the 1178, Yuri 1178, which is it's a stereo 1176. Awesome on rooms, overheads, stereo piano, lead vocal bus. I mean, anything you put this on, it sounds great. It's just a a really well done piece. It's a Stereo 1176, again by Audioscape. Next piece down is another Audioscape piece. This is the DBX 260 VU. Um, I use this a lot on piano, a lot on uh, background vocals, big gang vocals. I love the sound of it. Uh, what else? Bass, it sounds really great on. I mean, again, it's one of those compressors you could pretty much put it on anything and it sounds great, but this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, sounding compressor. And Audioscape makes just great stuff. You'll see a lot of Audioscape in this in this rig. Next piece down again. Sorry if it's a little dark. This is the Audioscape EQP One A. It's the Pultec Mono EQ. Pretty much strapped against uh, across my lead vocal. It's part of my lead vocal chain. I'm almost always will run a lead vocal through my Pultec. Next uh, level down here. Let me get on the floor. <clears throat> We have the Audioscape V-Comp. This is their version of the Stay Level. Uh, big, fat, creamy sound. Great on bass. Great on piano. Oh, even great on like lead vocals. Female lead vocals in particular. Love this thing. Wish I had another one. The V-Comp by Audioscape. And then last on this side, we have the Opto Compressor, the LA-2A by Audioscape. Again, this is a lot, this is 
almost always now on my lead vocal chain. Um, a lot of times I'll run my lead vocal from an 1176 into an LA-2A and then into the Pultec, more times than not. Um, outside of that, bass guitar sounds great. Um, acoustic guitar sounds great. It's an LA-2A, sounds awesome. Okay, let's go over to the next rack here. <clears throat> Okay, top of the second rack, we have four DBX-160As. These things are great compressors. For the money, you can't beat them. You can get them on reverb for a few hundred bucks. Now, um, I have two of these that are just normal stock units, and then two of these that have been modded by Revive Audio. And we did a, a, um, a review on the channel comparing the modded to the, to the stock unit. Um, Revive Audio did a great job. These sound good, these sound a little different. They sound, I wouldn't necessarily say better, quote unquote. They just sound different. So they got a different flavor than the stock unit. I have four of them because I'm using these a lot. Kick drum, all, quite a bit. I use this on bass sometimes or bass DI tracks. Um, hell, snare drums, they sound really good. Toms, they sound really good. Just a great utility compressor for a few hundred bucks. You can't beat it, you can buy those on Reverb. So we have four of those. Uh, underneath that, we have that second Aphex 204 that I told you about earlier. Then the next in the last 500 series chassis here is again by Wes Audio, a super carrier, it's 11 spaces. You can see I have a few open slots here to go. We have the first uh, unit here is an SPL DSer. I use this all the time. Almost every lead vocal is going through this. Next to that, we have the DBX520, which is another de unit. I use this a lot too. I tend to like this one a little bit better. It's a little bit more flexible, but the DBX, again, for like 250 bucks, I'm actually gonna get another couple of these. I'm actually gonna get one more of these and one more of these to have two pairs of de -essers. Next to that, we have two SPL TDXs. These are transient designers. Don't use these all the time, but when I need them on kick and snare, they're great. Um, even bass guitar sometimes. I've even used them on acoustic guitar. So these are really handy. They're not very expensive. They're cool. Very good to have. Next to that, this is a fairly new addition I got towards the end of 2023. These are two um, uh, API 560 clones by Cappy. These are the LC, I don't know if you can see that, the LC25s. Love these on electric guitars and acoustic guitars. Uh, got that API flavor. They sound awesome. I think these on reverb are about 600 a piece, or if you buy like a, a 50, uh, a 560 API, they're about a grand a piece. And to me, these sound just as good. The difference is the 560 has the little sliders on it. This has the little twisty knobs and it can get a little tight in here, but they're really great. This is my latest edition I just picked up at the end of 23. These are Neve uh, 551 uh, transducer EQs. Um, the verdict's still out on these, on how much I really like them. I will say, I've been using them on vocals uh, lately, aside from the Pultec, and they really open up vocals really nice. I got to experiment more with, the, with these more, but I wanted to have a few different flavors of EQ, because I got 32 EQs in the in the console. So I wanted to have some different choices. Why, I got the API, got the Neves, back over here again, got the Tridents. Um, so I wanted to have a couple of different flavors to choose from, and I wanted some Neve stuff, and I wanted something different than just a typical 1073. So these 551s are pretty cool. There'll be a video coming this year. I'll let you know whether I keep them, but so far, what limited use um, I've used them on, I like. Then we come down here, we got our three or four patch bays, excuse me. And I know you guys have been asking me to do a patch bay how-to video. I'll do that soon. Um, but this is our patch base. We're all Switchcraft. We have the entire console hooked up to it. We have all the gear hooked up to it. All the cables that are in yellow. These are all the permanent patches that you never take apart. And the ones in red, uh, these are for the buses. Right now I have our drum bus wired in for the next mix. So those are our four patch bays. Next level down underneath that, we have the ART Trans Y. This is something that my buddy Dave gave me or I might have bought it from them, I don't remember. This is by ART Arts. Great little stereo effect compressor. I used to use it on background vocals all the time. I haven't in a while because I have other things I've been using. But again, for the money, this is a nice little handy stereo effect compressor that takes up just one, one U rack, the Trans Y. 
Then when we move down, we have all of our 1176s, all by, most of them by Audioscape. This is the Audioscape 76A, the Blue Stripe. I use this all the time on lead vocal prior to an LA-2A, this going into an LA-2A. But this also sound, this sound, they sound good on anything, but I use this a lot on vocals. Next level down, we have the 76F, again by Audioscape, that's the Rev F of the 1176. Again, can use this on just about anything. Just great to have another great 1176 flavor. Then we have the last one here, the 76D, which is the typical uh, black plate. Again, all by Audioscape, these three. They sound great, use this on just about everything. Uh, beneath that, we have the Black Line Audio Bluey, the CLA Blue Stripe. This is one that I, it's got a very different sound than these three. These three are more of your traditional 1176. This is that as well, but with a lot more aggression. I'm not, I use it every now and again. I don't use it as much as I thought I would. I kind of like the sound. I've been hesitant to get rid of it because it does something that these don't do. But I don't, I don't love it. It's, it's got to be your thing, but it is cool to kind of have. I don't know. It may stay. It may go at one point. But when you need something that has that aggression, this does it. That's for sure. Let's see. Next level down here, we have the Audioscape XL305 Reverb. This is strapped across every single track in the mix in very, very, very small dose just to give the whole track a little bit of ambience. It's a great sounding reverb. They just released a plug-in of this, which I haven't tried yet. Uh, let's see, hopefully you guys can see down this low here. Beneath that, we have this Wes Audio piece. This is the NG76. This is their digitally controlled 1176. It came out in 2023. It's got a modern and a vintage mode on it, a saturation mode. Again, all digitally controlled with a plug-in. Really cool, don't use it as much as I would probably should. I should be using this more and to test it out a little more, but I love that it's all digitally controlled. Just like the piece underneath it, which is the West Audio NG Bus Compressor. This is the second half of my drum bus. This is always on my drum bus with that API 5500 EQ. That's an amazing, amazing compressor. Um, stereo obviously has a, a transformer circuit you can take in and out has a total harmonic distortion circuit you can take in and out, and it's variable, and it's, again, all digitally controlled with a plug-in, which is great. Okay, last rack is the I.O. and the computer rack. So up is the uh, the Trinoff Nova, the room correction. Several videos on the channel about this. Check that out, check the archive if you haven't already. The Nova's great, one of the best investments I've ever made. Um, I had the ST2 Pro, now we have the Nova on the One U rack space. Fantastic, more videos coming too on this throughout the year, showing how to use the app, so on and so forth. But if you're serious about mixing, you absolutely should consider a trend off. If you have even a fraction of this amount of gear in your studio, even a fraction of it, you have the money, invest in a trend off. Okay, next level down. Let me get my chair here again. Sorry about the shaky camera. <clears throat> Computers. So here we're running a, a Apple Mac Mini M2 from 2022 or 23. Way more horsepower than I need for this for this rig, so it's kind of future-proofed. It's just a standard Mac Mini. It's got 16 gigs of RAM in it. It's got a two terabyte hard drive. Above that, we have the UAD satellite, uh, the Octo, for some of the universal audio plugins that I run that are not they're part of their native system, so it's a good thing to have. We have our Thunderbolt dock by OWC to give me some more Thunderbolt and USB I.O. Uh, we have a power conditioner here by Monster for the computers and the Nova things that stay on all the time, as well as the next level down here, which is the Wes Audio NG Levelers. This is the ability to give me full uh, recall automation post-processing on a console that doesn't have automation built in. I've already done a couple of videos on these. Each one of these is 16 in, 16 out, 16 channel, so um, 16 monos. So I have two of them 32. That gives me the ability to have automation on all 32 channels if I need them. Uh, beneath that, we have our three audio interfaces here. We have the Quantum 2626, which is the monitor section. Then we have our two Quantum 4848s, 32 IO on each. 
that gives a 64 IO on the console. We've done so many videos on these on the YouTube channel. We shot these 4848 converters out against every popular, almost every popular converter on the market. They don't make these anymore. A lot of you have asked me, where do I get these? Because for the money, you cannot beat them. The amount of IO that you get out of this box for this money, they don't make them anymore. Um, when they were new, they were about 1500 bucks. I got two of them. You can't find them anywhere on the used market. They've been all kind of gobbled up. But I keep my eye out to see if anyone ever sells one to buy a, one as a backup in case one craps out. If I ever have to replace one of these 32 IO, I'm looking at two to three times the amount of money for anybody's brand that's out there. So I'm hoping that these things don't die on me. <laughs> so I love those. So those are our three quantums. And then beneath that, we just have all our power conditioners. We have six of them. The top five are for all the hardware and all the gear. And number six is for the console and the monitors. So these are all um, what they called uh, time delayed. So there's three different delays. So they turn on in stages. So not all the gear turns on at the same time. Had those for ever since we built the studio. Never had any issues. They're great. So those are the firm and power conditioners for all the gear as well as the console and all the speakers. So that is all the gear as of January of 2024. And then if you want to see real quick at the end here, we can take a look over here at the console. So I got the new Focal Trio ST6s. Those came in at the end of 2023. That's an amazing monitor. I've been using Focals for years. That thing is the most detailed, amazing sounding speaker at that price point you'll ever find. Um, next to that is my secondary set of speakers. Those are some IK Media um, iLouds, just to quickly check mixes. What else do I got? Uh, then down here for transport and for automation with the fader, I'm using the SSL UF1. And as you see, I customize it so it's kind of built into the console. It's kind of sunk into the console. Um, and then next to that, I have the Trinoff remote, which is uh, uh, doing all the monitor switching as well as uh, volume. So I'm not using the volume on the console, I'm using it on the remote. And that's it. So, and then we got the SSL, obviously. So that's everything. So that's the studio, that's all the gear. As of January, I don't know what it is, 20 summit, 25th, 26th, something like that. Or 28th, I forget. 2024, here's all the gear. We have a couple open spaces left here, 500 series lands. Those will probably get filled with something soon. Um, and um, most, I'm not really, really looking for any other kind of gear. The only thing I'd love to get, I'd love to get a Neve 33609. Um, that's something that I don't have. I'd really like to try. And then who knows? There's a bunch of new fair, bunch of new people building Fairchilds on the market. Maybe one day I can get a company to send me one so we could do a demo. But that would take up, I think, five spaces. That would have to go in its own special rack, right on top of our server rack, probably. So anyway. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you have any questions about any of the gear, um, let me know what kind of gear you got in 2023 as you're starting your 2024. And make sure that you check out MixingMusicAnalog.com as well as the hybrid mixing courses at HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this update, and I'll see you guys in the next video.